So liver health is so important, right, in our bodies because liver is the one. Liver is our organ who takes our toxins, flush out toxins from our body, right? So that's what we are going to be talking about: liver health as per Ayurveda and yoga. And we have a very special guest today, Angela Perger. She herself had issues with ulcerative colitis, and she used Ayurveda and yoga to help heal herself. And now she's an Ayurvedic counselor and yoga instructor. So let's just get her we'll get going with liver health okay so angela should be joining me in one second and hi, hi there how are you angela hello i'm well how are you i'm doing great thank you i i love your story i was on your blog and the work that you have doing i mean it's incredible um and and i love the way you uh, her, you yourself had ulcerative colitis and how you used ayurveda and yoga and now you are uh, in, you know you are advocating both the modalities so let's just start with that a little bit and tell us a little bit about yourself yeah thank you so much for having me here um when i was 21 and a college student my health kind of fell apart and i was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis and it was mm -hmm diagnosed with a rare liver autoimmune condition, primary sclerosing cholangitis, which basically um, from the Western perspective is a hardening of the bile ducts. And okay. when I would, uh, so it's when inflammation hardens the bile ducts over time so that the bile mm -hmm. can't be properly released. And mm -hmm. it's said that it could lead to cirrhosis of the liver. So when I was in college at a very young age, um, my doctor, I went to regular doctors, gastro doctor, and then to a university specialist. And they said, um, you're going to need a liver transplant within 10 years and you're not going to be able to have children. So mm -hmm. then, um, that sort of, I had to go through a lot of Western healing, like using mm -hmm. prescriptions yeah. and steroids. But meanwhile, <laughs> um, I started to dabble with yoga and playing with diet and just kind of intuitively knowing there might be something else besides what they told me. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I've tried all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And my path finally led to Ayurveda, which I see as like the mother of all of the health and wellness. Um, <laughs> and when I started studying, I just really started studying Ayurveda for myself to get to the mm -hmm. bottom of these imbalances, uh, because I also suffered hy hypothyroidism during my pregnancy. Oh like, my God. Which, uh, so I never needed the liver transplant. Mm -hmm. My liver is doing totally fine. Yeah. Uh, and I'm 39, so it's been 18 years since they said that. And, and you have kids? You have kids? Yeah, I have two kids. And, um, you know, it's not to say that my colitis is 100% cured because I think that we, in Ayurveda, we all have areas that require attention and awareness. <laughs> And I have a sensitive system, and so it does require attention and awareness. But for me, the magic of Ayurveda is understanding how nature works and uh, being able to recognize signals of imbalance mm -hmm. sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. And also feeling like there's something I could do about it. You know, understanding mm -hmm. that I can adjust what I'm eating or what I'm doing or my yoga practice or herbs or things like that mm -hmm. to bring myself back to center rather than just completely relying on someone else to tell me <laughs> the answer. Absolutely, absolutely. And you're doing amazing work, you know, advocating Ayurveda and yoga. So this topic, today's topic is specifically on liver health. So um, let's just talk a little bit about that liver detoxification from Ayurvedic perspective, right? Yeah, so basically from uh, the Ayurvedic perspective, the liver is an organ associated with pitta dosha. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming just a very quick refresher on the dosha sure. yeah. they all, all within us. Um, vata is made up of wind and ether. Ether is empty space. So mm -hmm. that's responsible for things like circulation, for the prana flow through our body, you know, mm -hmm. providing mm -hmm. uh, prana life force energy to all of the cells. Mm -hmm. And then pitta is fire with a little bit of water. Pitta mm -hmm. is um, that fire that cellular transformation. Mm -hmm. And so that has a lot to do with the liver because the liver is transforming and eliminating and like moving things that don't need to be 
within us anymore. And then kapha is earth and water, and that is providing stability and structure of our body and our mind too, but for this conversation, our body. <laughs> so uh, the liver's role in Ayurveda is that um, digestion is everything in Ayurveda. <laughs> yes. Uh, when we, so just from when we could talk about food first, but really when we're talking yeah. about consumption and food, we're also talking about drinks as well as mental impressions. And in Ayurveda, we look at everything that we take in as consumption. But so we take something in, a food or a drink. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the purpose of nourishment, we mm -hmm. chew it, we, and it goes through a digestive process. Mm -hmm. And in Ayurveda, basically, nutrients are passed through each of the datus, each of the, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the tissues of the body, the layers. Muscle tissues, yeah, muscle yeah. tissues, yeah. So the first layer is um, rasa datu, which is the blood plasma. So mm -hmm. That's what provides hydration and nourishment um, to all of the cells in the body. And basically, the liver helps to filter out as we digest things. Mm -hmm. uh, the liver is filtering out so that microscopic particles aren't going into the bloodstream and attacking different areas of the body. Mm -hmm. So Ayurveda teaches that we all have, we could say, weak areas or areas that require mm -hmm. awareness. Mm -hmm. So when we eat something, if we don't fully digest it, basically those microscopic particles mm -hmm. um, are going to have to be passed through the liver so that they don't disturb other tissues of the body. Mm -hmm. When the liver isn't functioning well, mm -hmm. which we could talk about why it wouldn't be functioning well, yeah. Yeah. it's not able to filter out those microscopic particles. So then mm -hmm. they're floating around, they get into the bloodstream and they travel uh, within each individual person to a place where there's a weak area. So this is where if someone's prone to having painful joints, mm -hmm. now the, that ama, that metabolic waste that's not getting processed out is going mm -hmm. through the bloodstream and it's going to gather up in the joints and start to cause pain there. Or it can go to another area and cause inflammation or pain. Or, or um, so for, if it's excess pizza, you know, it'll cause inflammation or pain. Um, mm -hmm. And if it's a kapha type person perhaps it's just going to sort of like collect and create things like benign yeah. tumors or excess water or bloating mm -hmm. or um, so when the liver is not doing it's not able to filter out mm -hmm. we can look at why <laughs> i see i see so the filtration of the liver is is very very important otherwise things are going into our bloodstream and that's uh, you know contributing to the different ailments Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so in Ayurveda, it's like the first most important thing is that you are food well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> even if we are eating things that would naturally support our body, if we're mm -hmm. eating them in a rush or doing mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. then uh, the energy that supports our digestive process is being dispersed. So it's like if we're scrolling and eating at the same time, mm -hmm. some of the energy is uh, absorbing that mental information, transforming it. Mm -hmm. And some of the energy is absorbing the food and transforming it. And mm -hmm. therefore the energy is being split rather than all focused in on the process of digestion. So that's just like- fo Focus on food when you're eating. Don't just multitask, which all of us do. Yes, yes. I feel like of everything that I've learned for healing, I feel like this thing, chewing my food well, was is the trick to healing ulcerative colitis. <laughs> because um, both the autoimmune conditions I had were very pizza related. Pizza is that fire, like just wanting to do things and mm -hmm. absorb a lot of information and learn and, and keep going and mm -hmm. not pausing mm -hmm. for the digestive process to be able to do what it's supposed to do. So anytime anyone has basically any symptom, like arthritis, acne, inflammation, you know, the first question is in Ayurveda is, are you chewing your food well? <laughs> Okay, I need to pay attention too. <laughs> I'm seeing it. I'll do. I, I have all kind of allergies going on right now in my head, you know, kind of in the mornings. So something is wrong with me also right now. Right. And like, not to say that uh, the chewing the food is, is going to fix everything, but I feel like it's nothing is going to get fixed without the chewing of the food. We can't bypass that on our way yeah. to herbs or changing what we're eating because <laughs> that's like the vital step. <laughs> <laughs> and 
All right. So let's talk about how did you, what did you do? I mean, we talk, liver health only. So what are the steps as per Ayurveda to cleanse the liver? I should say that, right? Well, in Ayurveda, what's really important to understand for everyone is that it is a path of moderation. It is not a place of extremes. So I even don't like that word cleanse, although it is appropriate because I know that I, when I hear the word cleanse, I think of something extreme. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the very first step on cleansing the liver in Ayurveda is really to remove that which is putting things out of balance. It's the same with do any doshic imbalance within the body. Mm -hmm. Just to figure out what are the things that are causing stress to the dosha or to the particular organ. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to the liver, knowing that it filters out toxins, before we do any kind of extreme cleansing or juice fasting or herbs or anything mm -hmm. else, really to look at what are you putting in there that's causing it to get clogged mm -hmm. or stagnant. Mm -hmm. um, and so, as I mentioned, you know, it filters out everything, so not just food, but mm -hmm. so we have to look at uh, when it comes to taking care of our liver and cleansing it, we could just start with our food, like, are our foods organic? Are they prepared fresh? Do we have positive energy when we're preparing them? Um, what kind of mood are we in when we're cooking? Like, mm -hmm. where are we getting our from mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to look at what we're able to digest because remember, whatever doesn't get processed correctly through the digestive system is going to be filtered mm -hmm. out. So for mm -hmm. example, if your body doesn't digest raw foods well, then eating salads is going to be problematic even though <laughs> technically that should be healthy, right? So mm -hmm. in Ayurveda, a lot of um, working on the digestive system, which of course includes the liver, is... Mm -hmm cooking foods and, and figuring out the way that our body digests them. Mm -hmm. And then eliminating toxins. So everything mm -hmm. um, from skincare, mm -hmm. you know, being really careful about what you're putting on your skin. Is it organic? Is it a natural thing? Mm -hmm. like the air that you're breathing, your cleaning products in your house, like things are really important for liver health. Mm -hmm. I mean, my husband and I argue about this all the time. He'll buy something like Windex. I'm like, no, <laughs> we're going to clean this with vinegar and elbow yeah. So all of those things are really important for maintenance and caring for the liver. So that's like first place to start. And then once we're doing those things, so there's less aggravation to the liver, you know, mm -hmm. then we can look at uh, particular foods that are said to be helpful for the liver, mm -hmm. like beef are said to be helpful. Of course, if digestion is an issue, cooking them. Greens and the bitter taste is said to be healthy. But what happens, it's really important to just kind of take stock on what's happening with each individual person because um, the liver is a pizza organ. So when it comes to what kind of care would be best for an individual person and in, in taking care of their liver, there could be stagnation and clogging from too many toxins. So then step one's Let's remove those toxins. And the liver is so beautiful because it regenerates, right? Yes. <laughs> so for some people, just clearing out any kind of toxic and paying attention to mindful eating, mm -hmm. uh, for many people are going to feel like amazing because the liver will regenerate and do its job properly. And then the next step is, you know, noticing um, if you have, a lot of stagnation than eating more things like leafy greens and beans and the bitter taste and removing congestive type foods. So it's natural is not considered good or bad. It just has a quality about it. Mm -hmm. So right now it's spring air where I live and in Ayurveda, we would reduce dairy. And if you do mm -hmm. eat, reduce that in spring, basically if we've been living in alignment with the season, we've been eating heavier soups and stews and things to kind of like mm -hmm. nestle us in for the winter. Mm -hmm. And now as spring um, is blooming, mm -hmm. we mirror what's happening in nature. Mm -hmm. So we can spend more time outside. We can eat more of the stuff that's growing in nature, which would be sprouts and leafy greens and things like that. So mm -hmm. the more that we eat in alignment with the seasons, the more this natural detoxification process for the liver happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but basically, I just want to say, you know, we always have to look at the individual. So if someone has high pitta, mm -hmm. then perhaps overdoing leafy greens and mm -hmm. foods isn't going to be the most beneficial thing because mm -hmm. um, 
the liver is an organ that's associated with heat because mm -hmm. of this transformational process that it does. Mm -hmm. And if we add too many things, like too many heating spices, mm -hmm. and the person is an overheated person, then we're kind of overloading the liver with a lot of heat. Yeah. If it need that. So there is a difference here. Both situations, the liver might not be functioning well. Mm -hmm. One situation is, an, is perhaps too much kapha energy, too much water, earth, kind of like stagnation. Things aren't moving through the way they should be, which is causing clog up of everything else. Mm -hmm. And then another situation might be too much heat. So that might look like loose elimination. So therefore, food's just passing through, really absorbing. Mm -hmm. So they'll have weakness and poor muscle tissue, but it's for a different reason. And so that person doesn't need to overload on the leafy greens. They need to focus more on sweet potatoes, and grounding vegetables, and mm -hmm. <laughs> So it depends on the personal, obviously, uh, I agree there's a personalized medical system. Uh, I'm use, using the word medical system here, yeah. which, which it is, it encompasses, but it's, it's it based, it's so personalized, like it's based on your, like you and mine could be completely different. And, and the kind of food that I need to eat will be different than what you need to eat if you want to detoxify our liver, to your point, right? Yes, it's like there's certain things in Ayurveda that are recommended for everyone because okay. based on, uh, for example, the circadian rhythm, it's recommended for all of us. Yes. We sleep at night and we're awake during the day. As mm -hmm. human beings, we are considered <laughs> nocturnal creatures. So mm -hmm. Ayurveda would recommend all of us mm -hmm. go to bed at a decent hour. Mm -hmm. um, Ayurveda would recommend all of us that eat, we eat food fresh in prana and chew our food by... <laughs> have a rhythm and eat at set times but then what we eat might vary mm -hmm. or take might vary according to these situations of is it stagnation or is it overheat yeah. uh you know, is it cold damp energy in there that's mm -hmm. like making things not move through the way they should move through or mm -hmm. is it a flushing out too quickly <laughs> Someone's asking a question about supplements and herbs. Do you want to talk a little bit about Ayurvedic herbs or something? Is it possible like we can take the Ayurvedic herbs, like depend, it, it is irrelevant to what dosha we have, each one of us has? So in general, um, of course, most of the time the herbs would be catered to individual patients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if the person has, um, that's one herb that, recommended for most everyone is triphala. So the traditional okay. text uh, suggests triphala. Triphala mm -hmm. is a combination of the three herbs yes. and um, it could be taken in water or by tablet. Mm -hmm. Usually Ayurveda would recommend the powdered form in water so that you taste it. The more that you taste it, the body recognizes what it is and can do something with it rather than something that's like encapsulated and we don't mm -hmm. have a taste to it. Um, so for most people, triphala would be really beneficial. Uh, take it like a teaspoon in water in the evening. Mm -hmm. So to help, triphala is considered a detoxifier and a rejuvenator. So that's what's mm -hmm. cool about it. And that's why it's appropriate for most people because it does both. Whereas mm -hmm. some other, most other herbs, you know, are more rejuvenative or more detoxifying. That's where we have to be a little more cautious on who's getting what. <laughs> The only instance I found where triphala might not be appropriate is in the situation of very high pitta. So if a person is experiencing loose elimination, um, then just even the slight detoxification effects of triphala might be too much. If there is stagnancy, then triphala is said to be helpful mm -hmm. before bed and first thing in the morning. So a teaspoon in water and a traditional way of taking it is at night, put the triphala in water and just leave it on the counter and then in the morning drink it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's said to like help the whole digestive system. And then Taiwana Prash is another mm -hmm. traditional um, mm -hmm. herbal rejuvenative. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Taiwana Prasham is has honey for a base. Mm -hmm. So it's not recommended for someone that has diabetes or blood sugar mm -hmm. issues or in the instance of high ama. <laughs> so mm -hmm. high ama is when the body is, um, there's a lot of toxins built up in there. Mm -hmm. So usually in Ireland, when there's some sort of 
cleansing. We want to be really careful that pop of moderation to not cleanse so much that we deplete. Uh, so there's can be a dance. Yeah, voices, uh, your network voices. Uh, I lost you a bit in, in between with oh. the voice. But you're talking about ama, you know, the undigested food that that stays in our bodies, right? That's where we lost you an ama. Right. So if you have a lot of ama, then you wouldn't take chaiwana prashram because okay. it uh, it's sticky. It's it has honey. So basically, in Ayurveda, um, when herbs are mixed in honey, they really penetrate into the datus, into the tissues of the body. So that's why this herbal jam is said to be really helpful for penetrating into the organs of the body and just helps the nervous system and like overall rejuvenation. But you wouldn't take it if you have a lot of ama. You would know you have a lot of ama if you have a thick white coating on your tongue. So um, it is natural to have a very slight white coating and see the pink underneath in the morning, just get that off. But yeah. if it's very th then you don't want to be taking honey or like things that are going to not allow that to come out, basically. <laughs> so then in that case, I would be more recommended. So when there's, uh, yeah, so triple is helpful for clearing out and it's a gentle rejuvenative. Mm -hmm. And then once there's been some clearing out, check mm -hmm. um, is helpful for nourishing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I think these are, these are really great, great uh, tips. I mean, Chaman Prash, you talked about when to take it, when not to take it, and Trifala, uh, you know, it's uh, three fruits, it's, it's uh, uh, Rasaina, right? What they call it in Ayurveda, <laughs> Rasaina, which is useful for everyone. And then the rest is on personalized to your point. Like if someone has any liver, liver health issues, then they should seek out a counselor such as yourself or someone else close to them. Right. Because I think the majority of issues with liver are usually around stagnation and mm -hmm. needing to clear out because then it's like it gets backed up. And so then therefore some other cooling herbs would be helpful. But, you know, there's always the question of if there's a lot yes. of heat, not, you know, um, yeah, it's just a dance of like making sure that the specific herbs, but yes, those two herbal formulas are pretty much recommended for most people <laughs> to but, try out. They're anything very, else uh, you'd like to summarize before we wrap up the session? This is really information. This is amazing session that you're educating all of us on how to keep our liver health sane, right? That's, that's what the topic is. I see people joining right now. Yeah, I think, um, we talked about mindful eating being most important, chewing food well. Um, Ayurveda also talks about eating at set meal times and creating yes. them. So uh, having breakfast at mostly the same time, lunch at the same time, and dinner mostly the same time. Um, not eating late at night. The <laughs> pizza time of night, 10 mm -hmm. to 2 a.m. And Ayurveda teaches that the body process everything that we took in. So all the food, all the things we learned, all the conversations we had. Mm -hmm. and at that time, we are basically not giving our liver the rejuvenation that it needs. And so if that happens consistently, then we're not giving it the consistent care that it needs. So basically not eating past, you know, 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. So that's time for things to digest before we go to sleep. And then ideally, it recommends we're all asleep by 10 p.m. or sometimes <laughs> that. No so, parties, no parties at all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like me personally, I think about... Um, you know, there's always exceptions. There's always special exceptions. But once I start doing something three days in a row, then I've created a new habit. So I'll let myself yes. like have a nice thing up once or twice, once in a while, but then like bring it back in for consistency. Oh, and then the other thing that we didn't even touch on is the liver energetically is connected to processing our emotions because it's that conversion and especially connected to like anger or resentment. And oh, wow. okay. uh, when we don't process those emotions, when we like stuff them, that's where they go. They go to the liver. So all the things that we can do to support emotional health and release of emotions. So just like journaling, dancing, physical movement, you know, tapping, mm -hmm. um, anything that helps to recognize emotions and mm -hmm. let them move through rather than keeping them stuck in there is going to support the liver. And so if we're doing a liver cleanse, so to get the emotions out yeah know, right yeah. Yeah. I, and i i <clears throat> i'm an example i i used to hold my emotions a lot and i used to have liver problems i mean not liver problems but you know just a little bit of a liver issues i should say that 
and uh, you're absolutely right yeah and um it's just amazing like when we when we just um don't hold on to those things as part of us when we can start to have some separation and just release them out and especially if if you're the kind of person that's in your head a lot, that you mm-hmm. get out of head. like to me, I've been dancing a lot during the pandemic, just dancing at home <laughs> uh, to release that out. And mm-hmm. um, okay. oh, and then according to Ayurveda, no fun either. But according to Ayurveda, alcohol, refined sugar, and really strong flavors do aggravate the liver as well. So <laughs> absolutely. Well, these are these are great, great tips, Angela. This is amazing, amazing session. I love the work you're doing. I hope we can collaborate and offer do more work together um, because the kind of work that you're doing is so amazing. And and, and we, we were talking about liver health, supporting your liver health as per Ayurveda. And and uh, you know we we are, we're going to save this uh, session so people are welcome. I know people are just uh, joining right now. They can uh, re- you know view the session after we are done. Uh, all right, I see. Thank you, Angela. So uh, please let us uh, know your feedback and DM us, uh, you know, the topics that you like to see in future. And hopefully we can collaborate with Angela to bring you more um, interesting programs. Thank you. Thank you so much. Angela, I think you have a network issue, some network issue with your uh, voice. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you so much for having okay. me. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Angela. Thank you so much. Some network issues are happening right now. So I'm going to um, end the session. If there are any other questions and any feedback, you're welcome to reach us. Um, I think Angela is having some network issues, but we were able to get through this program. I think uh, hopefully uh, all of you like these programs that we're doing on a daily basis. If not, let us know also. Yeah, we'll stop. We'll we kind of reduce our sessions. Okay. Thank you so much and have a great day, everyone. Bye bye.